Another question often asked and answered today is, could back pain make you dizzy? This is probably a less um, linked concept. Um, there's plenty of people that have dizziness and vertigo, but they often, it's not always accompanied by back pain. So it's often seen as an inner ear issue. The Apley maneuver will be applied and that may or may not work. The nature of the Apley maneuver is that it does arguably rebalance C1. So C1 is called Atlas, and Atlas as in the mythical uh, body that he held the world on his shoulders. So the Atlas bone, uh, a circular bone with two sort of little scoopy things, is actually what the skull sits on on top of the neck. So it's a bit like universal joint, so it swivels and tips, and that helps the head to stay level with the horizon as, the as you move your body around underneath. So it's a bit of a swivelly adaptive joint. Now if that actually gets some sort of torsion or, or strain so it actually moves in some direction so it gets jammed, because of the way the vertebral arteries run up through there, because of the, the way the nerves um, enter and exit through here, it's actually attached to the dura, the brain stem goes through here, uh, cranial nerves are involved in terms of their pathways, that actually can create dizziness. So it will actually have an impact on the vestibular system in the ear, but it's also working almost directly with the proprioceptive system through the neck and skull to help you know where you are in space. And that's that reeling down the hallway, holding on to the wall, feeling slightly nauseous as you go. So some might describe it as many is. Um, so it's a, it's a series or a collection of symptoms in many ears that would be um, dizziness, vertigo, vomiting, um, often a migraine. So we have in clinic noticed that often there's a significant rotation and sideways movement of the C1 bone and if that's adjusted there's a nearly instant magical shift in that sense of vertigo the room stops spinning, the person stands up and doesn't need to clutch onto things. So that is actually sort of an instant fix. Now the other components through, um, if you like, the neck and skull are that the neck itself is a whole unit from here to here. That actually is not sitting in symmetry and there's a loss of movement and adaptive function. So the curve, the curve that should curve forward like this, that's gone, could all be back to front, could be a curve backwards rather than forwards. That's not there. Um, it immediately changes that proprioceptive feedback from the feet to the skull about where you are in space and creates some confusion and often dizziness. Um, the jaw, because of its connection to the skull and the neck via a muscular sling, and some of the slips of muscle go up into the inner ear region the pterygoid muscles. So they actually will pull into the inner ear and disrupt the vestibular system uh, via sort of connections through the structure. And then the skull itself is a dynamic system. It has subtle millimeters of movement that actually are detectable. And if that's actually not able to do appropriate sort of movement with like suspension through space as you move and adapt, that can create problems into C1 and the jaw concurrently that will actually create a sense of vertigo. So we've found in practice that doing a skull correction balancing, looking at C1, correcting the jaw, will often create quite a magical uh, improvement in vertigo. So you can add an Apley maneuver if that, if that doesn't clear it, because that can often be a sticky issue. But those semicircular the, the, the crystals, the balance crystals in the semicircular canal within the ear don't really move that much unless you're doing a lot of headstands, in which case they are obviously shuffled to another area. <clears throat> so I would say back pain, neck pain can give ver dizziness or vertigo, but quite often it's, a, it's not accompanied by pain. It might be accompanied by stiffness, but you often don't turn up, in my experience, people have 
vertigo but often not a lot of neck pain. Certainly the vertigo is in dizziness is sufficient that it actually eclipses any other pains and the person is not aware necessarily of a mid-range mild neck pain. They're only really aware of the nausea and the vomiting and the dizziness. A third or fourth structural component that's often involved with dizziness is the pelvis. Because of the relationship between the pelvis and the skull, it's a mirror paired of bones and the fact that, that when that's unbalanced, there's often a seesaw compensation through the body that will often lead to uh, a, a, some sense of dizziness, but not in all cases. So, four things to check, which would be C1, the jaw, the skull, and the pelvis. And if we check all of those and they're all in uh, tip-top order and there's still dizziness, then you're potentially looking at um, some other investigation to determine what the final factor is that needs to be cleared to ensure that you are no longer reeling down the hall holding onto the walls. Okay, stay super healthy. I will give you some tips in the uh, link in this that you can use to um, help you in terms of balancing those structures that we just talked about. Okay, all the best.